Hello, everyone. This is Jim Samard with Care Printing and Publishing. I've been authorized by ClearProp TV's Paramotor podcast to edit this week's show and rebroadcast it for you. In this edit, I endeavor to focus on the guests, their story, and what they have to say. If you find this show even a little bit informative, please give it a thumbs up and that will benefit others. It'll allow them to find the video easier and learn as well. So if you have any questions, put them down below in the comment section and I'll answer them. Also, if you enjoy the show and you wanna see more, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified when more videos come up. Have a great day, enjoy the show. Wow, look at how many people we have in the Super Chat. Let's go ahead and say hello to the people in the Super Chat. We got Joshua Marsh, whom is also on the panel. Welcome. We got John Wayne. Hey, what's up? What's up? Uh, Jim from Care PPG up in Canada. Will Smith. Will Smith. Will Fly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll take it. Will, hey, you're, I didn't know that we had Will Smith in the house, but that's pretty cool. We got Bill H. We got uh, another... Uh, John Wayne again, boy, you guys are just yapping, yapping. That's awesome. Mr. Dana54, James is in the house. This is really awesome. Uh, we are going to be giving away some stuff today. So make sure that Will Smith or Will Fly knows that you're in the house. So make sure that you tag him and says and say, hey, I'm here. I want to be on the spinning wheel of Winnie Things. And of course, we'll talk about that in just a moment as more and more people join. Since we've got so many people here in on the panel, I'm going to quickly go through. But we do want to talk with Jim real quick because he is our official a sponsor here on the show. So Jim from Canada, a eh? my only friend that I know that has maple syrup smelling money from Canada that helps support <laughs> the show with decals and stickers and all sorts of cool stuff. Jim, welcome to the show, buddy. Hello. And tell us a little <laughs> bit about your company and how we can uh, uh, get some decals, which is decals for us people over here in the U.S. You can connect to carepp.com. And from there, you can get access to me or some of my employees, and we'll hook you up with whatever you need. If you want a design, if you have a design, we can use that, and we can make stickers for you, uh, calendars, whatever you want. Yeah, uh, he is the one that actually printed out all of our calendars from last year. If you go over to paramotorcalendar.com, he's the one that hooked us all up and we gave them all the way all across the United States and over to Australia. So they're all over the world. So Jim, how do we get to you? Uh, I see a QR code, do we click that? You can definitely connect, click that. That sh will take you directly to carepp.com. You, uh, you can find the various websites that yeah. are available to you like the DIY printing or connecting to the custom department. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. We definitely appreciate everything that you do for us and the community. Let's go ahead and go through uh, the panel real quick. Will Fly is going to be helping us out and getting everybody on the spinning wheel of Winnie Things. So please make sure you say hi to Will Fly. And of course, if you haven't connected already, go to willflyppg.com. You'll see all this cool shenanigans there. We also got Joshua Marsh. He was on our show and he's also a panel member. And welcome, Joshua. Glad that you're back here again. We got Linda Anderson. She's our paramount. USA. She's the one that if you want to be on the show, cook up with her by going to ParamountUSA.com. It forwards over to her Facebook page and just PM her and say, hey, yo, I want to be on PPG Grandpa's Paramotor Podcast, Clip Rock TV, and Paratalk.org. We also got Sean Lee. Sean Lee, what's up, buddy? He's on his Howdy, phone. Buddy. He's just going to be in the background here helping us out, and we definitely appreciate you there. I also got John in the corner. He's uh, going to be hanging out and asking questions and helping out on the panel. But it's not about me, PPG Grandpa from PPGGrandpa.com, or I Fly Paramotors, or Clear Prop TV. No, it's not about me. It's not about the panel tonight. It's all about Todd Scott. Todd Scott, welcome to the show, my friend. Hey, how's it going, Sean? Doing good. Good to see you, man. Uh, man, I tell you what, it's so cool. Todd is going to be giving away some stuff from Vortex Arrow, so make sure you say hi to Will Fly and let him know that you're here so we can put you on the spinning wheel of winning things. But it's not all about the spinning wheel of winning things. It's about paramotors. So, Todd, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into paramotors. 
Uh, well, I always wanted to fly, and um, my military career didn't present me with that opportunity until I retired and looked up in the sky and seen this guy on this red wing. And uh, I said, hey, that's one of those things. Didn't even know what it was called at the time. Uh, chased him down, went through a slew of celebrities like Tucker and, uh, and others that got me through to, to a trainer who um, helped me achieve my goal of flight. Um, my first 50 flights were remarkable, um, hooked in backwards. I didn't believe my buddy, <laughs> but it worked. <laughs> um, since then, I've gained quite a lot more flights and um, uh, learned a whole lot more about the sport and how to fly and how to race through wings until you get to an advanced wing that um, lets you know, hey, time to slow down a little bit. Um, I got away with doing things like. Uh, <clears throat> get in my seat with my brakes, uh, dare I say. It doesn't happen. Nobody does it. Um, <laughs> well, I got away with it on a beginner glider, and so I felt I was invincible. And when you're on an advanced glider, it does exactly what you tell it to do when you tell it to do it. It, it almost can feel you think the thought to tell it to do it, and it does it. And, well, when you pull an inch or two of brakes normally, Instead, you pull over 12 inches of the brakes to get into your seat. Your glider is going to do exactly what it tells you to do. It's oh, going to no. spin. <laughs> what, what, what happened? I mean, did, were you able to pull out everything okay? What happened? Uh, well, I mean, I was on a perfect launch. Um, and I was, was already in my seat. I just didn't feel like I was in my seat far enough. So in that right-hand turn that most are likes, uh, it was climbing, got about a story up. and um, reached for the seat that I was already in and the glider spun about 180 degrees over top, collapsed 50% of it. And the ground came up faster than you could slur any cuss word. <laughs> did you, did you hit the ground too? Uh, no, I believe in crumple zones. So I took it. No, of course not. I absolutely <laughs> tried to come out of my seat with the fall. The bad thing is it's a full tank of fuel, brand new. You know, everything was full up. Uh, the, when the glider spun, I had enough time to look down. So the GoPro footage shows me looking down and then hit the ground. And um, being in the military or retired from the military, I thought I could do a parachute landing fall, except there's this 52-inch hoop on your back. So it's really hard to roll. <laughs> so left gotcha. foot contacted ground foot first and um basically shattered the uh heel bone in three pieces oh um, no. yeah hit hard enough the frame and everything hit hard enough that uh the frame took one little dent from the prop coming off and the gas tank took a look like someone shot me with a coke can perfect round hole sliced through it um again with the prop uh, the prop came off because, well, I broke the top of the motor off. <laughs> so, how do you so, break the top of the? I mean, you broke the whole top of the motor; it just sheared off. Yeah, the whole top of the motor, like, like if oh you, my gosh. Uh, the whole upper pulley just completely se severed. Huh. And I'll tell you, I, that was only one story. I would not want to fall from anything higher than that, because you know, even out of seat is still a hundred pounds strapped to your back and it hurt the biggest no, thing I... that hurt was that's one of my ideal places to launch and land a nice mm -hmm. sod farm and all i could think of was get off of this property fast <laughs> it never <laughs> happened <laughs> oh my goodness well i'm glad you healed up everything was good do you trek also so while you're healing up did you trike or did you just take some time off from flying so the doctor had a couple of bits of advice, of course, stay off of it. And the other one was uh, wheels could possibly work. Um, so I begged the wife and uh, we budgeted <laughs> a, a set of wheels for it. And I went with the Calibri trike, love it. And um, I've had a couple of them now and, and it's, it's, it's totally different on a trike. It's nice I can fly the same wing with both foot launch or trike. 
the difference is the trike, I'm basically competition loaded, you know, 60 pounds over loaded on the wing. That is incredible. So now I know that we have a lot of people that are listening to this that ha that are flying, they are paramotor pilots and people that are wanting to get into flying. And if they hear a story like this, they might go, oh man, I don't want to do this. If, if, if you can like <laughs> fall down and break your foot and something like that. So tell us, tell us, um, you know, why this happened and what's the takeaway from this for other people that are wanting to get into uh, paramotors? So, um, I started out on a 28 meter universal one, one, it was a little bit big and boaty. I kind of wanted to do trike back then, even then, but it was, it was suitable for my weight, um, through my, my, uh, dealers and instructors that I talked with, uh, from there, a very short amount of time. Uh, I don't know a year, if that, I think I went to an 18 snake, um, Quite a and, and jump. For people out there that don't know the difference, what's the difference between a twenty meter, between twenty eight and an eighteen? That's um, a lot of fabric that you're yeah, missing. Yeah, but bus to motorcycle. <laughs> so I mean, you would no. go. So you go from something big like a twenty eight meter to an eighteen yeah. to be able to be more carvy, right? To be able to go faster, yes. have more carve, and and after I, a year, you know, you can do something like that. But yeah. like you said before, you know, uh, a little bit of pressure on a 28 meter, you know, it's not going to do much. But yes. an 18 meter, you pull a little bit and it's going to do all sorts of carvy stuff. Exactly. And then when you jump to a 22 end game wing, it does it even faster. My, my 18 snake taught me a lot about flying. Um, I, I was able to follow motocross guys around a dirt bike track almost every corner where I could match with them. A lot of fun. Yes, I know low flying is dangerous. Altitude is our friend. Um, I like to fly low and I accept that risk. Um, but having a glider that can do that makes it, dare I say, safer. <laughs> uh, it's like you have the, the, the right ride for the right occasion, you know. Um, and it's, I notice it. You, some people have seen me fly uh, at the, at, uh, the recent fly in. Um, uh, uh, um, easy pace it, uh, in Virginia. Um, I flew three different motors and I flew my glider under wheels and foot launch. And, and foot launch, I probably upset people because I fly low, carvy. Um, I, I, like, I like that hard turning stuff. Uh, when I have my trike, I tend to fly higher and it doesn't seem to want to carve as easy, even though I'm sure I could. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun and don't let accidents, you know, I, I knew better not to do that. Nobody has to tell anybody not to pull brake to get in the seat. It, it's beyond a beginner mistake. Um, it was something that I thought I can get away with it. And I did a, a few times until I didn't. And I'm just glad that when I didn't, I was close enough to the ground to learn a lesson, but not necessarily a sport ending or a, a mobility ending lesson, um, you know. On beginner wings, like A wings and something like that, if you pulled that much, like you said, you could get away with it. So, yeah. so if you are not flying or your new pilot, don't let this story scare you because he's on an advanced wing and that's what happened on advanced wing. He's, he, he knows how to fly. And like he said, um, it was, it's risk versus reward. You know, it's like, yep. you want, do you want to fly low and go carve? That's your risk versus re reward. You know what the risk is, you know what the reward is. And you're like, okay, if something happens, I'm going to get hurt. Um, altitude is your friend. I tell you what, uh, that was a really interesting story. Kind of scary because, um, you know, that falling out of the sky, I think it's every paramotor pilot's worst thought. You know, what would happen if that wing collapse? Uh, before I started flying, that was my scariest thing. It's like, what happens if that wing collapses or is a tip uh, collapse or whatever? After going through my first SIV, never worried about that again. Um, probably too much. Have you ever done an SIV or advanced training courses or anything like that? Uh, no, I, I would love to do an SIV course. I, 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 I think it's something that I, that I need, that everybody kind of needs. Um, 
put push your limits in a safe environment i guess um i i, I don't know you don't you don't have to crash a car to under to to uh, you know ex, um appreciate a seat belt you know or airbags um yeah. but it but then again if you have crashed a car it's a whole different level of that appreciation um you know it's like you know falling is it better to hit the ground at three from three thousand foot or from from 20 15 10 feet at, you know still traveling 30 40 50 mile an hour you know i don't know i i i i fly with a reserve every time i have a reserve also and I know it's not going to do me any good that low to the ground. <laughs> Maybe a drag parachute, but, but a snag parachute. But, um, you know, there's just falling from, from altitude to me is a bigger fear uh, to me. But I've always been kind of a speed type of a, a, a guy that, that, you know, likes to go fast and, right. you know. Gotcha. So... Now, uh, so you got into Vortex Aero, so you're able to fly different wings, different motors, work on different things. So what are the cool things? I mean, you're working someplace that I would love to work, right? I mean, that, that just sounds so, amazing. So, so what, what is it like in the day over at Vortex Aero? So my relationship with Vortex Aero is a very interesting one. Very lucky. Um, it came at a time when the net was kind of blowing up over Tucker got receiving his paramotor. Uh, his second paramotor, I believe. Um, and I'm so I was Vortec Aero has had this exhaust pipe that they came out with. Uh, it started out um, at heart based off of a 225cc uh, motocross um, exhaust instead of a 125cc scooter exhaust, which most use. Um, and it was tuned, the cone, the baffling, everything about the pipe. It is for our 200 cc type paramotors, um, which is why it works on every paramotor that we've um, applied it to. Uh, it, it's nothing magic. It's nothing special. It's a little cheaper than the OEM version that has. Um, well, I won't say nothing about it just yet. Um, we uh -huh. sell 300 exhausts a season for three oh. years. No, I just want to say that I am sold on it. I had one on my Moster 185 Classic. I've had it on all my other Milsters. The main thing I like about it, and it has, it, it seems like it gives it more power from the OEM and those little brass things that you got to replace every 25 <laughs> hours. You don't have to do that anymore because they replaced it with what, like metal, right? I mean, it's just, it's, yeah. it's part of the pipe. Right. Um, there's so we have a header section, uh, we have a manifold, then a header section, um, which is that first C bend, and then it goes into a multi spring main chamber ex expansion chamber to the silencer. Um, our expansion chamber is slightly different than the OEM version, which is where you get a different power band. Uh, two strokes get their power from their pipe. Um, they we all have the six six millimeter piston. Um, the our, our motor that we make is a Viper 200. Um, it's a stroker motor. Uh, it looks just like a Viterazzi. Um, You've got not all kinds of different motors out there, um, but the pipe is what really gives it the the power when it should, when it should, and and when the pipe turns on. So our pipe basically turns on right around the forty two hundred RPM mark on the motors that is it's applied to, like Viterazzi. Um, in doing so, it helps to remove some of the spike that's between your high and low settings on your Moster 185s. Um, that's that, that like 5,200 to 6,400 spike that you get. That's really kind of hard um, to, but uh, with, with our pipe, it flattens that, gives you just a little more usable power band through the midsection. And uh, we've had some people say that they've lost 100 RPM at the top. We've had some people say they've gained a couple hundred RPM at the top. It kind of goes with where you fly and the rest of the tune of the motor. Uh, it's very fun working with Vortex Aero because one is it's not my stuff I'm breaking. <laughs> so, so it's easy on the wallet. Um, David's a generous owner. Um, and I was the first person to break one of the Vortex Aero pipes. Uh, I got it shipped to me and I had a, one of the spring retention hangers was broken. Um, we got into a 
conversation, shall I say, with the guy that used to run the online store that David decided to take over. And so I got a new pipe under warranty, just like we do now, two-year warranty, no questions asked. Basically, it's broken, it's broken. You know, show us it's broken and we'll send you a new one or fix it, replace it or uh, pay, pay you to have it welded, whatever. Um, we've, in three years, 900 pipes roughly, uh, we've had 10 failures that, have, that we know of. Four of those failures are from my own testing. Um, I broke one <laughs> and then I became uh, uh, part of the Vortec Aero family and uh, I death tested two others to make them break so that our consumer doesn't have to have a product that they worry about. When's it going to crack? Uh, I mean, I'm, I hate to say it, you know, the, a very large American motor um, company or not American company, but they sell a lot of motors to America, claim no responsibility. It's not their flaw. It's the pilot's flaw. We don't do that. As a company, um, we believe the pilot. You know, the pipe broke, it broke. I mean, I don't need 15 pictures. I just need a mailing address, and I need to know which way we want to go with it. Um, that's all through David, and David's okay. He's the owner. Uh, we may have some other items that, that are going to um, hopefully shake the market up a little bit. Um, we do have a Viper 200 XT. Some people have purchased it and some people have received them as a soft release. We have already made changes uh, on some of it to make it, uh, um, to make it more appealing to the broad variety of people. Um, you can tune the motor. I've posted several videos. Uh, people make claims. They say it feels like, I like to say, this is what the gauge reads. You can see it. I can see it. At that time, at that moment, that's what it's reading. Um, and I've shown anywhere from 190 pounds of thrust to, you know, 150 pounds of thrust. Well, the thing is, is when, when you dial a motor in for its extreme performance, you have to maintain it to its extreme performance, just like a drag car or anything else. So um, the, the Viper is very tunable <laughs> and, um, I can't say when it's being released yet because I don't control that. David is the guy. He wants to make sure that he has plenty of stock on hand for the people that want it and the and to have the parts available. Um, and right now it's not there, so it won't be released until then. However, we do have some other items that are just as remarkable, like a clutch kit, a universal clutch kit, we call it, that can basically turn the three most common um, uh, shafts, diameter, um, motors that are non-clutched into clutched. And it's as easy as changing the belt. Um, basically pull off your upper pulley or your belt off the upper pulley, pop your lower pulley off, put our adapter on there, put the belt back on, um, run a clutch. <laughs> that is awesome because James in the uh, chat said, uh, will Vortex Aero ever offer a Viper 200 with a clutch? So I assume that, Absolutely. yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's an option now. Uh, basically, it's like, a, I want to say it's a $225 option. It's not very expensive. Um, we also have something that people that spend all that big money for that factory are, and they just want to push the button to make it go. They don't want to have to pull that cord. They want to push a button. So we also make a e-start kit that's a universal application for uh, Viterazi um, so that basically you can turn any of your model Viterazi 185s into an e-start um, pretty much by yourself. There's Ooh, different... Wow. That, that, that it's listed on our website. Uh, I think it's like seven fifty. Uh, if you need every single item in the kit, but being as that we are the company that we are, if you don't need the item in there, why buy it? So we can reduce the cost of that um, kit by whatever those items you specifically need. Um, of course, I clear everything with with David, but uh, that's what he said. Is he said that you can buy the kit in any of the 
the components you needed. If you don't need the e-starter because you already have it, you don't need the throttle, you already have an e-start throttle. You know, those are, you know, a couple of $300 items that uh, you can save. Um, that we, is awesome. Uh, real, we, real quick, real quick, we're almost rolling on uh, 730. Uh, halfway through the podcast guys don't forget that uh todd and vortex aero uh, family is going to be giving away some uh merch for you guys so make sure you say hi to will fly and let them know that you want to be on the spinning wheel of winnie things we also got some questions for you in the super chat um who wants to ask the questions in the super chat anybody on the panel is more than welcome to yeah i'll go ahead and ask one uh this comes from a uh, left paramotor todd who did you train with I <laughs> trained with. <laughs> I laugh. It, it, I, I laugh. Um, the guy did did exactly what I wanted. I did not want a high end school, and, and I call it the the luxury training. I wanted backwoods alley. You know, three minutes of hey, this is what I think you might need to do. Oh, okay, maybe six minutes. Um, just a little above that level, and, and I was willing to pay a little bit for that knowledge um so tucker passed me to mark honeycutt mark honeycutt wasn't training people at the time and so he said there's a guy named tony um he goes by tony full fingers on facebook i believe uh, it's tony higby is who he is um he was not an instructor he had maybe 80 flights when he helped me and uh several other people um he is a very interesting person, um, and uh, he still flies. He was a fixed wing pilot, probably why he's interesting. Um, but uh, he's a good guy. He he gave me the knowledge I needed. Um, I spent about a hundred hours kiting on Oak Island Beach, which also helped out. And um, our timelines didn't match up for when I was hoping to get my feet off the ground. So. It kind of happened without his guidance, without a helmet, and with a brake twist. <laughs> so, um, yeah, needless to say, it was not a stress-free first launch, but it was successful. And uh, as much as he doesn't claim to be my instructor, he absolutely is the guy that helped me get into the sky. Awesome. That that's good. Glad you got in this guy safe. That's that's all that counts. And how many years <laughs> have you been flying now? And how many hours you think you got? Uh, well, I've got over five hundred flights. Uh, how long have I been flying? Like four years, three or four years, probably been flying. Got to be four years. Um, I'm really bad. I I say I just retired a couple years ago, and it's been like nine years. So. <laughs> Uh, I, think, I, think, I think it's probably years, Todd, because it's been not the same amount of time as Darren. Um, Darren took 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 lessons with me also, um, so yeah, probably four years, I think. Yeah, well, you were you were like the first person that I remember. I'd travel two and a half hours every day that you guys that you would fly yeah. you and Jay. Yeah, yeah, just to fly with another paramotor pilot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I um James um I think he might be in on the chat um. Uh, James Howie, he was, I actually helped a few people get into the sky. Um, I like to say, help them not kill themselves. Um, yeah. Yeah. If they don't want to do it with the full instruction and, the, and you know, the, the extreme safe way, at least having somebody there that knows, hey, don't, maybe not, um, <laughs> turn your risers around the other way, <laughs> you know, uh, it, it, it helps. And um, I, that he, everybody that I've helped get into the sky has far surpassed my flying ability. Um, probably mostly because I was trying to rocket through the sport and I thought faster, faster, faster. And when I met gravity, um, everything got slower except my glider, <laughs> but I can only fly it so slow. Okay, we got uh, another question in the super chat. Anybody wanna ask that question? Mad Sloper says, how come PPG pilots don't use foot stirrup for getting into the seat? Uh, as I understand, there actually is a foot stirrup that some use. I, I always thought it was um, the uh, 
the speed bar that was hanging down and I thought, why is that, why are they using their speed bar to get in the seat? That's crazy. Um, but actually, yeah, I, I can't remember the brand that makes it, but there's uh, actually a stirrup that some, uh, it, just like the speed bar that they use a kick strap to get into the seat. Um, uh, it's really just it, when your harness is adjusted the right way and not extremely loose and sloppy, like I, um, got used to flying it. Uh, when your harness is actually set up correctly, when you tuck your butt, it grab it, you, you don't have to put yourself in a seat. The seat's there. Uh, it just stays with you. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, I haven't really had any problems with that either. It seems like as soon as I lift my knees, my butt just slides into the seat. Yeah. I, I, I noticed a lot of people really like to have their leg straps and stuff really tight. And I, after the first time when I had my harness come forward on me uh, in a seated position, I realized I could put a football or a basketball <laughs> in that gap. I was like, oh, wow, this is not meant to hold you in. So I kind of didn't, you know, if it was on my back, like a backpack comfortable, I was good. It, you know, got enough speed, airspeed, you came off the ground, you're going to fly. Um, but yeah, it, I, I learned after the fact that, um, when your leg straps and your straps are all properly adjusted and your harness is sitting the way it's supposed to, flying is a whole lot easier. It really is. It is really is amazing uh, when, when everything is set up correctly. Yeah. Um, anybody in the Super Chat have any questions for Todd or Vortex Aero? Do you use any of their products? Um, I, like I said, I like the exhaust. I mean, I put that on any, every most any five, and I have lots of hours on mine. Uh, I took. Um, <laughs> I don't go by flights anymore. I go by hundred hour maintenances I do on my motors. But now that I have multiple motors and multiple hundred hour maintenances, I have no clue how that's, many hours that's, I have flown, or I have no clue. It's that's exactly my problem. Is is now that you know when I had one motor to deal with. You know, I kept really good maintenance hours and everything, but um, in in my relationship with Vortex Aero, I get a call at two o'clock in the morning because we're 12 hours difference. And he's like, hey, uh, did you get that piston that I sent you? Yeah. Um, go ahead and throw that in there. I want to see what it's going to run. <laughs> uh, wait a second. Everything was working good. <laughs> so he sends me all kinds of products or, and stuff and, and upgrades that we're going to sell and, and um, had me test them. So I never get to do the maintenance because it's always being torn down and rebuilt and torn down and rebuilt. Uh, so it's, he, li he likes to say that he's invested a lot of money into my knowledge. All I know is that before I was um, a member or part of Vortex Aero, I could tell you that a two-stroke was in a dirt bike and a lawnmower. <laughs> I hear you. We've got a couple of uh, questions here actually on the panel. Uh, John, you went first. What's your question, sir? Yeah, I actually had a couple. Um, one, um, I know early on you guys were really promoting a lot of like the accessory stuff with, you know, like the fuel gauge and uh, the different throttles and stuff. Are you still doing quite a bit of that? I just haven't heard much of it. And... The other one is just a curiosity thing where you said you fly higher with a trike than you do foot launch. And I usually see the reverse of that because you're not really scared of landing on your face with a trike. So um, first, the, uh, the question about other items that we sell. Um, I cannot list how many items that we sell. It is a very full store. Um, I... I get the vibe from some fellow pilots or, or dealers, uh, businessmen, whatever, in, importers, that, I, that, that Vortex Aero is competition. The only problem is there's only one store on this planet right now that sells what we sell. We don't sell any OEM items, so we're not competition to any dealer. We only sell aftermarket, and literally... With from mirrors to cups to prop covers, we actually we make our own prop. It's a very close copy to look to to look at it. You'd say it was a helix, uh, except the way we the the weave is laid down with our carbon fiber. The prop comes out slightly lighter, which helps it spool faster. And between um, that prop and London Ivy's um, uh, prop that he has, um, those two are the two fastest props out on the market that I have tested and. 
I have tested many, many. You know um, what? You know what? I, I not only do I have the pipe, but I also have that um, that prop. Remember, I said that I had more thrust, more power. Yes. Maybe it yeah. was a combination of the prop and the exhaust. Yes, uh, it it definitely helps. Um, we we were selling them as stage kits where you can do carb uh, reads, um, air box, the, the air filter, the exhaust, um, all kinds of different different um, things. Uh, but we sell. Uh, I mean, we we even have a, a side uh, page that is uh, for e bikes um, where he sells e bikes also. So. Um, Vortex Aero sells a lot of stuff. We we have people that think that we copy everything, that we are a cheap Chinese company that copies. Um, the reality is our items usually come out first, like our exhaust versus the OEM, several versions. Um, and um, the items that, that we produce are improvements over the OEM item. So just like you take your Corvette down <clears throat> or your Mustang down and you have that supercharger put in it because it's just not fast enough. Well, we have parts that help um, with tuning to help you do the same thing in the paramotor industry um, or just to ma maintain it. We have uh, motor mounts. Our motor mounts are, are very rigid, um, very good for the shock absorption. Our springs, read, I mean, we have tons of items on our store, uh, vortexarrow.com, uh, not Vortex Aero USA, vortexarrow.com. And um, that, feel free to come by and take a look. Uh, if, there's, if there's something that is showing out of stock, uh, I'm not really good at updating the stock, but I can talk to you on the phone or on chat and, and let you know exactly what I have right there, show you the item if need be. Um, <coughs> I'll do my best to give uh, the customer and, and anybody that, that I'm, I'm around, um, whatever knowledge I can help them with, can't always give free items because it's not always mine, uh, like propellers and stuff. But uh, if I had it to give, then I definitely would help. And I have helped some of my uh, fellow pilots out. Um, it, it's kind of nice. I, I'd like to video more at the fly-ins and it seems like I spent the fly-ins tinkering on people's equipment and, well, uh, <laughs> It's great that everyone else makes videos so that I can see what, you know, all was going on at the fly-ins. Yeah, Bill Bill H. also said, what is the website still the same? Where can I buy parts? And what was the website yeah. again? Vortexarrow.com. Okay. Uh, and we also have another question in the, on the panel. Sean, what's your question, sir? So it kind of has to do with props. Uh, is there, that I know of, there are only two quick-release props uh, devices. Is there uh, one in particular that you care for the most? Uh, I would love to have a freaking uh, a quick release prop device of any kind that worked because I tell you, it, that's the most daunting thing running tests and taking the motor on and off is, is having to undo all them bolts. <clears throat> I, I've gotten very, very close to torque spec just by hand. <laughs> <laughs> You know, well, I've tried um, a, I've tried a couple of different kind, and uh, I've had a little bit of problems with both. And I really? didn't know if there were two two different. I mean, if there's more than just the two out there that you might know of, do y'all uh, sell one? No, we don't sell one. Uh, Dim I think Dimitri um, he had one that was pretty nice, a screw on with a safety lever. Uh, uh, that's what I Iris. The Iris, Iris. yeah, uh, Iris. Yeah. Yeah, I've had that one. Um, I'm horrible with names, so please don't take offense. <laughs> but yeah, um, there's a lot of nice products out there. I, I haven't got a chance to test to, test them. You know, uh, most of them. But if anybody you know had an item, um, I had a buddy come over today that wanted to dial in his uh, Viterazzi on my thrust table. Um, it, it 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 was it was very nice when when Jay saw that his Viterazzi bone stock okay well stock with our exhaust um pegged out at 210 pounds of thrust <laughs> wow yeah it, it wasn't wow. It, it it actually was was 170 um but the the initial read on the scale it wasn't cleared <laughs> out from the first time so it was <laughs> plus up 
Uh, that <laughs> yeah. makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, it, it was almost like setting it for a negative uh, read on, you know, when, when he zeroed it out, except it, yeah. it gave him. And it, yeah, you should have seen his eyes light up. <laughs> My eyes lit up. I was like, what? Wait, wait, wait. These are numbers that I don't see. Um, so. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. I think I missed part of John's, the second part of John's question. And now he's gone. Yeah, he's, he texted us, said that he's down to like a couple percent. Yeah. He probably just lost it. I have a question, uh, Todd. Maybe we've had this discussion before, but you know, I fly a 125. I went down from a 130 to a 125 prop. And, yes. uh, uh, and it's an e-prop is what I'm, I'm using. But uh, it was kind of fascinating when we were talking that you were saying something about how the 125, your version, the Vortex version, uh, could put out more or equal to a 130, I think it was. Maybe it was equal to a 130 or close to it. So in other words, the 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 thrust that you lose stepping down from a 130 to 125 could possibly be made up with a different design prop. Oh, yes. Uh, for a very specific example, a DT propellers. Everyone knows what they are. We sell them also. <laughs> we sell EEPROP. Um, when we sell our Vortec Aeroprop, um, the DT prop on Jay's motor today, um, at the same max RPM, eight, eight, it was like 84, 8,500 RPM. Um, the D, his DT prop was producing like 150, 160 best. It, when we switched to the VA prop, it same size, he gained 10 pounds of thrust. Really? So the difference between a 125 and a 130 in our prop is only a couple of pounds different. You'd be lucky if it's five pounds, or you'd be very unlucky if you saw a five pound difference. So a 10 pound difference in props is rather substantial. Um, I, I, I have wood props that get better numbers than that, but not saying anything bad about DT. DT is a heavy prop, and some people that have prop strikes a lot, DT prop is very resilient because they use a lot more. Their, their, their prop is more substantial. Um, they, it, it is a nicely made prop, and it's, it gives decent, it gives okay numbers, acceptable numbers. So are those the props that you'd want to have if, uh, you know, you, you're brand new and you might butt land, you might uh, hit the cage, yeah, you, you might turn exactly. or something? If you wanted to have a, a carbon fiber prop and and you wanted something that, that might be able to um, skip across the ground a little bit more than it should, uh, DT is, is definitely a good brand that to, to do with that. Um, the, the, you know, it's, it's, it's funny, you swing a 125, um, I dialed one of my HPRs in today, uh, and I swing a 115 and I produce the same power. Really? Yes. Well, I mean, I did, I knew so that the, I was gonna, the smaller was gonna the prop, the generally speaking, the more pitch it has. And so it takes a bigger bite of air with a smaller footprint. That's why when all, all these 160 centimeter props, they're very long and narrow because they take a smaller bite of air out of a larger footprint. Huh. But it's kind of nice not having 52 inches on your back as a, as your circle, you know, 115 centimeters is, is a little itty bitty prop. Yeah. And, and what I found, uh, not this past year, but the year, one year ago at easy pace, um, you, I, on my wing with my Calibri trike and my weight, basically 300 pounds all up, um, I need 112 pounds of thrust to be able to fly. And, and that, that like maybe gains altitude. Yeah. So, so when that little 115 pound motor is putting out 120 pounds of thrust, I was like, yes, <laughs> you know, everyone's chasing, ah, oh, I want 190. I want, you know, 200. I want, okay. It, it's great. I got it. I've got one to do that too. It's a lot of fun having the power, having the excess power. Um, but having something small and portable is nice too. Yeah. Well, I mean, do they, 
were they out of 125 props or were they just starting to make them or vortex For what? vortex era they have oh no no we out. so so basically when we have when we do an order of props um they get sold very fast so uh I do have some in stock. I have a couple of 125s in stock actually um, right now. Uh, and what we have changed is we used to offer a discount. We no longer offer a discount for our e-props. We just offer the cheapest price on the web. Yeah. So, so we, we now include the discount so you don't have to type in nothing special. Our price is already going to be the lowest price. Um, and, and it's a great price. Um, even e-props can't beat it. <laughs> save, save me one of those 125 props. Definitely, definitely. I love our props. I love pushing them. Uh, I wish I had a ton of them um, to, that I could just give out to people because it is a it's a really nice prop. <clears throat> and it's a little ten dollars cheaper too than than or twenty dollars cheaper than than the e-pop or the the helix. Bill H was wondering if you have any 125 three blades. I absolutely have 125 three blades. Would you like a 287 reduction or a 268 reduction? That's something I'm very glad that you brought up because I wrote it down here on my notes to have you go oh, over. Great. The, uh, the uh, reduction. Um, yes. Why is the reduction and why do we, I mean, I already know, but why do we need to have those specific props for that specific reduction? Well, so I got to talk dirty just a little bit about them one more time. I'm sorry, Viterazzi, but not only do they tell us it's our fault, <laughs> but uh, they also tell us part numbers. So when you, to, to get your reduction, you divide your small pulley by your large pulley. You do not include the belt. Um, the only time you measure the span of the, of the pulley is to buy a belt suitable for that pulley, not for the reduction. To measure your reduction, you simply divide the small from the large diameter and you will get a number. Um, so if you take the OEM part numbers that people like Chris at Sky Sports, he's my number two. If I don't got it, I buy it from Chris um, at Sky Sports. Uh, it, it, if you look at they have a great diagram with part numbers, with the dimensions and everything on their site. Well, the numbers match the OEM numbers and the numbers match the numbers that you will get if you were to take calipers and measure your own Viterazzi. The problem is the math does not equate to 2.68 in any way, in any lifestyle, I don't care, that math does not equate. It does, however, equate to a 2.74 reduction. So <laughs> why does Viterazzi like to spin a smaller reduction on their prop or larger reduction? Because they like to spin at 8,000 RPM. When you do the, the, the math for the prop speed, versus the motor speed and you use the reduction to figure that out, you'll find out that most paramotors, uh, including the 11,900 RPM of the Sky 150, they still spin the prop at about 3,000 RPM. 3,080, 3,120, 3,100. They all spin them about 3,000 RPM. So in the end, the prop is still getting spun at the same, but you're running your motor at a much faster RPM for many reasons. Um, and it's whatever the manufacturer chooses, but uh, fuel efficiency generally is not the reason to have your motor spinning massively. <laughs> it does help you spin a bigger prop though. All righty. So we're rolling up on eight o'clock. How long do we have you for? I, I forgot to ask you on the pre-show. I don't know. How long do you want me for? 10 hours. I mean, we can do a 10 hour. <laughs> show. I mean, we can talk about paramotors. This is great stuff. Uh, uh, as, as long as you want. I mean, you know, we, we normally go for an hour, then we do the after show uh, for a little bit. So as long as you, I, I just don't want you to go, oh, I, I thought it was just an hour. No, I'm, I'm fine. I, I'm, I'm here for a while. I mean, 
you go on to somebody that can talk, so I guess I can talk. <laughs> That's good. That's a good thing. We like people that can talk, especially content, talk. But it's content. As long as we're talking about paramotors and paramotor facilities. Yeah, I, I really things. love it. You know, it, you know, getting in with Vortec Aero, it totally changed. I mean, really, I was an idiot. I, I could change the spark plug. I, I wouldn't, but I, I could, <laughs> you know. And knowing what I do now, I can safely – you know, troubleshoot or diagnose, diagnose at least my motor, you know, I might not be able to help everybody. Um, but th th that's another thing that's, that's really nice about this company is, is David is not a profit margin, like psycho, you know, he's got to make money, got to make money. If you knew the actual cost to manufacture the items that you use, you would absolutely Never want to pay retail again because <laughs> because it is a perverse, sick, just massive profit. Massive. Uh, unfortunately, that's that's the way everything is over here in the United States. You know, if you knew what it cost to to well, actually make that ten dollar cup of coffee that you get at Starbucks, why would you want to spend that, that ten dollars at Starbucks, right? <laughs> well, more like an eight dollar piston that you pay one hundred forty dollars for, <laughs> right? <laughs> but yes, exactly. Um, it, 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 but it, but what's what's nice is that not everything that comes from certain regions of the world is just junk. There absolutely is junk. But uh, when you have a, a the owner of a company that watches and oversees every single thing that he makes and manufactures, he has a standard that is his standard, and it, he wants to produce an item the, like his motor. Um, I. I I talk to him every day and I'm like, David, we got to get a website up. We got to sell this motor. I want you to put, I want this motor out there. It will go crazy. Um, and he's like, yes, I know. I know. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> so um, the Vortex Aero exhaust, um, it, I wouldn't say it's louder. Would you say it's louder, Sean? Um, the silencer, the tone. silencer stays stays the same even after repacking yeah. the silencer. It, it it just sounds the same. The only one that sounds a little bit different, um, unfortunately, is the Adam eighty, which is the quietest motor I think that's out there. But uh, as far as um one eighty fives, the OEM exhaust compared to the uh, the aftermarket from um, Vortex Aero, other than feeling that extra power and having that extra power, it sounds the same to me. I I don't think there yeah, is a difference. It, it, it's i mean we sell a lot of them and, and and i joke and i kid that that um you know 900 failures um i i'll just say we sell 300 pipes you know however however many of those are just people that want the upgrade versus that that don't want the oem crack um uh, all i know is it works at every single motor i have i put one on i have a couple of different versions of it that i run um so one of my versions is it, it it's it's loud <laughs> It's 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 loud. Um, I need to change the silencer on it. It's got a short silencer that's almost gutted, so um, it really has that two-stroke sound. That reminds me: is there any way that you can make maybe even a longer silencer that's Absolutely. packed differently and make it a really quiet 185? Because if you do, I will Absolutely. buy one because so I got to put can. earplugs in underneath my earmuffs, and it's still loud. Yeah, you, you actually can increase the silencer length. You can uh, go on Amazon and buy the correct tube, even carbon fiber if you want carbon fiber. Um, and you can use your, your stock Viterazzi. Well, no, you have the cone down the middle. You'd have to figure out how to do the I meant Vortex the Arrow making one. Yeah, well, we so we have one coming out with our Viper that's got some different design. It's titanium. Uh, yeah, we, we, he wanted to go with titanium instead of, um, or maybe it's titanium and, and uh, carbon fiber. Um, the carbon fiber is the under cues. Um, he, it's, it's, it's just, it's really nice, man, to, to, to be a part of it. You know, I, I claim no fame of, of it other than I'm his, his test dummy. And I'll tell you, he could send me anything he wants and I will absolutely test it because I, Vortec era, they, they stand behind their stuff. You know, you break something, we sent, we replace it. You know, uh, the warranty, it, it's, it's just, I know because I am the guy that has to do it. So, <laughs> so if I can't fix it, then you get a new one, you know. Um, we've had a couple of people that were not happy. Um, 
that it didn't work the way they wanted to, it to be. But um, in the end, I, I can't say that I've met very many um, paramotors that I wouldn't want to talk to or associate with. They're, they're all freaking great. Um, you know, people have different likes and, and noise level tolerances and whatnot, but um, I don't know. I'm old, so I kind of can do it all if need be. Um, at least I can do what I can do, right? Yeah. All right. So um, Todd and Vortex Arrow is going to uh, give us uh, some merch to send out, and we're going to do the Vortex Arrow thing. Yes, Todd, were you saying something? Yeah, five. I got, I got some five uh, gifts to send out to, to people. Um, uh, should I show it? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm sure everybody wants to see cool. what you got. You bottle, babe? This is exciting tonight. So... Hopefully I can get this to show right, but I think the black background screws with this one. Might, might have to, <laughs> it absolutely just, does. Just put it in front of your shirt. Put it in front of your shirt. In front of that. There you go. We can see it now. There we go. So that's cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll do a better. Let's see here. Um, well, it's got three pieces. Basically, you have a. Can I get that there? Let's see. Right there. So there's a lid. To make it a sippy cup for like coffee and hot beverages or cold beverages. There's a no slip base that can, this green ring can come off or you can put it on your dash and it slides perfectly. <laughs> then there's, there's this uh, soft rubber ring so that you can um, hide your drink oh, wow. in there. That's a little oh. smaller one. Um, maybe. You put your, put your adult beverages in there. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah. I didn't even think about putting your water in there. That's neat. Yeah, wow. you can get a water bottle in there. It's a tight fit, but a little spit and she'll slide. Um, <laughs> what show, I mean, what show drink, is this? So you can spit it, right? <laughs> uh, we got the other part. <laughs> I love but your assistant. You're doing good, Rebecca. It, uh, <laughs> it absolutely fits a Corona bottle perfectly. Nice. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's. So when it's you a, when you win this stuff, you're gonna have to definitely go to fly-ins and and uh, show off your Vortex Aero koozie. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so when I go to fly-ins and you see the big green tent that that some people have been seeing and been annoyed by um, <laughs> because of the lights at night. Um, uh, when you come by the tent, I have giveaway items like that. Um, usually what Vortex Era likes to do is like what Cracker Jacks like to do. Nobody bought Cracker Jacks because they wanted to eat that, 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 that popcorn. They wanted that prize in the bottom of that, that, that sticker, that stamp, that little army man. That's what they wanted. So David says we put a, try to put a little gift in with each of our, our uh, store purchases. Um, you know, Very sometimes cool. it's a mirror with a, with a, a thing that you could wrap around someone's i mean so you don't lose your phone um <laughs> there's, there's, there's the tether, a, the tether. Like yeah yeah the tether <laughs> thing with a bottle opener thing uh we've had a couple of versions the first version used some sort of like fishing line and we found that it actually still breaks so david went with something that you probably could sever a head without it breaking <laughs> it's it's rather robust uh, it's a piece of wire um coated wire really nice stuff um stickers you know whatever uh plus i usually have the the rare and elusive unicorn there you know the, the 200 xt I, I i take the two that that i built that i fly they're slightly different than what the um production version is but i um well i, I don't have one in the box no more because i already sold it um but there is one more hit in the market that's pretty awesome um could I get you to uh, do one tonight and then the next shows one a night over yeah, the next? Yeah, yeah. Uh, because that way we can, you know. Uh, however you want, however you want. That's fine. That way we can say, you know, Vortex Thorough on the next uh, four shows. <laughs> awesome. That works. All right. Sounds good. All right, Will, if you got that spinning wheel of winning thing, let's see who's going to win. And remember, you must be present to win and you must 
say that, hey, I am here. So if you have not done so already, refresh your screen because there's sometimes a lag and there could be a minute or two lag. And if you don't say anything in a minute or two, we're going to respin. So at this moment, refresh your screen. If you're on YouTube, hit refresh. All right, Will, whenever you're ready, buddy. And um, I'm going to ask you to unmute. There you okay, go. so uh, and yeah, while they're refreshing, I wanted to uh, say uh, lift paramotor Austin. He's asking, are you still flying with uh, our buddy Brett? Brett Sharpie. Ah, oh, Brett um, has wow. fallen prey to the married life. Oh. Um, his wife, his wife does Mrs. Badger. Um, they're a great couple. She she makes awesome furniture. And they're they've been doing really full force with uh, with the furniture business thing. So unfortunately, I think it's been whew, it's been a minute, been a minute uh, maybe a year. I think since we've last flown together, it's been a while. I haven't flown with him for a long time. I and know. So shout out to uh, Jay Everts. What's up, Jay? Also, All two right. guys. Make hey, sure Jay. that your name is Jay on here. And uh, also, too, we only have 10 likes, so we're going to spin once we hit at least 20. There's almost 30 people in here, so we need a couple more likes before we start spinning. And while we're waiting for those likes and ma making sure that everybody's on the spinning wheel of winning things, can you tell us really quick again, Todd, about that new uh, motor that you got? Because that sounded pretty interesting. Yeah, so uh, the, the Viper 200 XT, it is um, that that hopefully Dave will let us have and release to the public. Um, we're just working on getting the stockpile built up. Uh, so it's a 200cc motor, very similar to the Moster 185. Um, we use stronger internal components and a slightly longer stroke. So our motor is a stroker motor. So um, what does that mean? It means that we, for every one of our strokes, it takes a longer path and it um, is a slower RPM, it's a slower, spinning motor so like i was saying earlier about prop speed 3000 3000 rpm on the prop is what most motors spin well vitarazzi makes that prop spin 3000 rpm by spinning the motor at 85 to 8700 rpm we spin that exact same prop less than 8000 rpm 7950 and produce the same exact okay we we drop 20 rpm on the prop uh you can't feel 200 RPM in most cases. So 20 RPM is so minuscule. Um, and, and that equates to better gas, get better fuel efficiency, shall I say, um, and, and less vibration on your back. Does it also have the same bolt patterns? So if I want to take off my 185 and put this new one on, it has the same bolt pattern, right? So it, it has a very, very similar bolt pattern. It will fit uh, just about every frame that I have come across without any modification. Uh, it's a four bolt pattern on the back. Uh, it's not like Polini that does the two at the top and the wider um, at the two at the base. Um, they're the oddball. Uh, it's, yeah, uh, we, 66 millimeter piston, Walbro 37 carburetor, uh, Vitarazzi likes uh, 0.4 turns to uh, and one and a, and a half one and a quarter on your high needles uh, we run one on our low two on our high um, so a lot of differences in the motor but if you see if you see my red motor uh, we were producing cnc cases um, long before other companies were and uh, it it's everyone thinks it's an r <laughs> it's until they get close to it and then they're like wait a second that's not a factory R. <laughs> what is this? And it takes the regular uh, prop prop patterns too. We don't have to. Do yeah, so so all of our props, uh, like our props that we make, um, and our motors are dual drilled. So we're drilled for the six millimeter six on sixty um, Vitarazzi pattern that's common, and we're also the same pattern as Corsair uh, with their eight millimeter um, bolt pattern, the larger bolt pattern. Uh, so it, it's really nice being able to spin different props. Uh, one thing that's very interesting is we were coming up with a prop. Um, and it's a prop already existed. It's a G73L uh, for the Vitarazzi. It did not exist. Uh, it now is for the factory R in a 2.87 reduction, which is kind of interesting because it's a nitro prop. Or wait, it's a Corsair prop. Yeah. <laughs> the only difference is the bolt pattern. Um, and now there is a bolt pattern for Vitarazzi and it's sold under the factory R brand. 
uh, very, very interesting. Um, it, it was giving pretty nice, nice numbers. Um, but we, we try to run Washner piston if we can in, in the motors because we, uh, they, they have a lot be better longevity in my testing. I've ran it over 500 degrees several times without any issues. So a little bit of peace of mind there. Um, you know, it, it, we have, uh, our reads, um, Viterazzi has, we have a couple of different reads. Uh, we have the G force four reads, which are the carbon fiber pedals. And then there's another one that we use, which is the Rimaldi reads. That's a Rimaldi branded read. Looks very similar to the, to the Viterazzi read. Uh, just that, that clear colored, um, material. And for your maintenance, um, you, you have the same maintenance for the, uh, for the, for the Viterazzi reads as you do for yours or do they last longer? Did we lose you? Did you lose me? Am I here? Hello? Yeah, you're here. Okay. Todd, did we lose you? It's usually my internet that dies out. <laughs> it looks like you froze. All right. So since he froze and we got our 20 uh, likes, thank you very much guys for the likes. Appreciate it. Let's go ahead and spin for a Vortex Aero um, cup and I got one of those and they're they're like the um, the stainless steel very heavy duty um, I'm surprised they give them away because those are they feel like they're worth a lot of money yeah they look nice well here we go all right well it's all you brother all right it's round and round and round she goes Where is uh, she? Austin lift paramotor congratulations man wow sweet lift <laughs> paramotor Right on. <clears throat> All right. So we are going to do the spinning wheel of Winnie Things again next Monday. So make sure that you come here and say hello on the super chat. And uh, we're going to be giving away those, I guess, for the next four weeks. How awesome is that? That's cool. Yeah, I think there was a couple yeah. of people that said, don't be cheap. Give them all away now. Who said that? I saw that up there. I don't remember who said that, but that was. I don't funny. know what a name. <laughs> I, I laughed. I laughed. Um, we got Fly, Baby Fly, PPG in the house, Bad Sloper, uh, Para Ninjas in the house, Jay Everest. Um, is there anybody else in here? Wade Collins that I did not say last time. Mike, Mike Thompson, PPG, James. There we go. Where are we at? All right. So glad everyone is here in the house. We definitely appreciate you guys. Bonnie what Frank. a one, what a wonderful fun evening tonight, Todd. Thank you so much for hanging out with us and talking paramotors and paramotor <laughs> things. I, 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 was th I was thinking about King. I was thinking about King of the Hill and and the you know propane and propane accessories. It's like <laughs> paramotors and paramotor <laughs> accessories. I'm like, yeah, there we go. That's what we want to say. <laughs> Um, but anyways, uh, I had a great uh, time tonight. Um, any other questions in the super chat that we may have missed? Anybody on the panel have any questions? No, but uh, did you see who won, Todd? No, I did not. Yeah, Austin did. Look, Paramount. Austin, Austin, yeah, so cool. How, how does Austin get up with you to? Uh, um, he can uh, he can contact me through the through the uh, number on the web page. Yeah, it's also i monitor it all the time or you can shoot me a message uh, i need it just need his name and his address and i can ship it off to him right on yeah, oh sean by the way that motor that we make yeah um so it makes anywhere from 150 to 190 pounds of thrust right yeah with the 130 drop and it does so for a very meager price of 2150 dollars wow. oh nice oh and it's wow. dual start I know what I'm with, going with to dual start. So, did you catch that, Sean? I am going to get one. I'm going to get up with so, you. I, yeah, I would love for you to fly it next time. Next time we, we can get together at, at, by a fly in or something uh, or anytime. Um, I have no problem with letting anybody fly it. Uh, it's they're, they're a lot of fun. Sounds like it. Now you have your own frame for that too, right? I mean, it's not just the motor is you got the frame and throttle and everything for it, right? Did we lose them again? I think we lost them again. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I don't know if they have the frame. I thought it was just the motor. Um, that Yeah, that motor that's very comparable to a Moser 185 that's a 200cc. I, I wonder. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there you are. Oh, so, hello? Yeah, I, we got you now, Todd. So, so do you have a frame throttle and everything for that? Or is it, are you just selling the, um, the motor? Yeah, I, I don't know. 
I think oh, we I think we lost him again a little bit. Yeah, we I know him. he's got the throttle. I know he's got the motor. Yeah, yeah, he's throttles are really good too. There you go, oh, Todd. I think there we, we go. Yeah, so we offer a frame also, the SXT. Um, great frame, very solid. Um, I know I crashed one. <laughs> and are you still there? Yeah. Okay. We're here. Um, and uh, but but I have my motors are mounted on a frame, and I have no problem with letting somebody try to fly it as long as they know how to fly. You know. Okay, so the frame is available now. Yes, the frames are available now. We have titanium stock, which is just beautiful. And I don't know of any other manufacturer that has a titanium frame for under $2,000. Ours oh. is under $2,000. So the frame is under $2,000. The motor is $2,100? Yes. I'm doing the math here. Yeah, and, and that your, math. And your throttles are really inexpensive, too. It comes with the throttle. comes with the gas tank. comes with swing arms, net. Uh, the frame comes complete. All you need is a harness and a motor. The motor comes complete. All you need is uh, something to put it on. We're working wow. on we're working on creating a harness that's very, very, very similar to the um, Dudek Comfort Light, but I don't know the status of it. Um, we got rid of stop making harnesses a year ago because we did not like the work that the seamstress was doing, and she was taking shortcuts. And it reflected on us. And so we said, nope, pull them. Uh, we pulled them. Uh, that's kind of what I'm flying with. <laughs> and and, uh, and uh, we, it's taken eight months to find a seamstress that will actually produce the items the way that David wants them made. Uh, so that's the kind of stuff we sell. You know, we, we try not to sell no junk. Um, and if we do sell junk, at least we back it up and warranty it and give you more junk. <laughs> that's, that's the coolest thing I think I've ever heard a company say. <laughs> I mean, really, you know, if it was junk, do you really want another one? I mean, but... <laughs> hey, I know you don't know a guy named Jay Everts, but he wants to know if you, uh, or how much the steel RTF frame is. The, the what? The steel R RTF frame. RTF? Yeah. I don't know what that is. RTX. STX? STX probably is what he is. Yeah, yeah so we already answered that. Okay. Yeah, we got it. And how about the netting? You guys sell netting? Yeah, we do have nets. I have nets in stock too. I think it's like $69 or something, uh, maybe less. Uh, not really sure offhand. I, I'm horrible at quoting prices, so I just like to say vortecarrow.com. <laughs> just. Yeah. Type in the search, it's there. But I do have stock, even if it says there's no stock. Um, a lot of stuff that I had out at the uh, fly-in was new stock that came in. Uh, and some stuff like like all my e-props in the 268 reduction have been replenished um, and they're selling. So um, we we are sell, starting to sell some of the larger props um, for Polini. Uh, so, um and of course, we're also the kind of company that if there's something that you want, like an e-prop for an off-motor, um, I don't know if you saw my last posting, but we had a, uh, an F33 uh, hearth, a prop for a hearth um, that we ordered for, for a customer. Um, I, I don't know why I listed it, just other than it's, you know, an e-prop on there and shows some of the stock. But it, it also shows that, you know, if, if there is something that you want, um, we definitely can look into getting it for you or point you in the right direction. Usually that's Sky Sports if we don't have it. But <laughs> right. um, yeah, the, the, and there is some, some, some times when, um, when David can, can make the item for you. Like uh, our frame adopted to fit a Polini uh, Thor 250 um, with that funky triple pattern reinforced and everything. Uh, the, the, there, there's a lot. Uh, all you got to do is ask. I'm really horrible at answering the email, but I'm a lot better at the phone and the text messaging. So. You like talking paramotor, don't you, man? Yeah, well. <laughs> hey, um, Jay was saying the RTF is ready to fly. Oh. Ready to fly. Steel uh, well, that's, that's, so we had a $700 version of the frame, um, which was all in pieces. I don't know if David's still doing that or if it's just the $900 version um, now, anymore, but um 
the, it's re- it's really pretty easy to 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 assemble. I mean, other than the net, if you had to put the net on, I haven't had one that we've sold yet that wasn't. Um, I mean, I put swing arm. You put the swing arms on it. That's about it. Uh, one customer, yeah, one customer that bought a whole paramotor, um, but he wanted it all in pieces. He saved a whole lot of money. Probably about four grand for a complete paramotor, most are one eighty five type power, um, without a broken pipe. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was I, I got one of those broken pipes too. And the thing is too, before the pipe broke, I got four of them. <laughs> I, I tell you what I did. I mean, I made sure that everything was was tight. Yeah. With, I made sure everything was good. I put it put put that WD forty stuff on it. Make sure it didn't get overheated. I warmed it up like they said. You know, I did everything and it still broke in the exact same spot. Yep. My picture looked like everybody else's. Everybody picture. else's. Yeah. Yeah, and it, you know it's crazy that that a company does not assume that or acknowledge that that responsibility whether they cover it or whatever they do with it but at least acknowledge that you put that piece of crap out there instead of oh no you got to rub it with some liquid that burns off well before the pipe is even hot enough oh wait a second mild steel went to to make its chemical properties brittle enough to break it requires 1400 degrees fahrenheit rapidly cooled to negative 40 now tell me when are you ever going to fly in negative 40? So you ain't never going to be rapid cooling anything in negative 40, let alone flying it. It'll get no. 1400 degrees on the pipe, but to cool it down in a minute to negative 40, it ain't happening. No. So, so even the metallurgy is not even there, yeah. you know, but um, yeah, it's nice that our pipe saves money. I used to say it was $25 every 50 hours or something. But apparently that brass bushing is more like 50 or 60 bucks. And now they want to change it like every 25 or 50 hours. I don't know. I, I, I think it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I hate that brass thing. And uh, I was very, Just one more I, part. I guess I was, I guess I was kind of happy that the uh, exhaust broke and I had to go get, you know, my uh, Vortex Arrow uh, exhaust because now I don't even think about that brass part. I, people are talking about the brass part crumbling and going through the prop and or just breaking. I don't have to worry about that. I love it. Yeah, I, I guess I could could um, give credit to Kyle Matulo because he was my dealer for, for Vitarazzi. And after two pipes, I welded four times each. I said, look. I'll do the pictures. I'll do the warranty. But how about like you give me fair value what you think that pipe is worth so I can go get something else. And he said, okay. And gave me full value of that pipe. I could not believe it. I, like, <laughs> And I bought a Vortec Arrow from then. And now I will have the t-shirt. All right. Uh, Sean's got to go. So catch you later, Sean. Have a good one. Appreciate you. We also got a... Uh, we got a question in the chat. It, it came up uh, Yeah, I missed one. We, but we skipped it. It's from uh, Bonnie Franz. It says, I wish that you... Oh, this is the different one. Um, we're, we're, let me go back up to the other... Uh, he was asking question. about which pair of motors would, would you all suggest? Yeah, yeah the, first, the first question that she said was, what motor is recommended by a complete newbie? And by newbie, I'm talking about don't have anything yet. Planning on training, getting equipment next spring. Um, Obviously, talk to your instructor, fly the stuff that they have at the school. That's why you're paying them. You're paying them to try right. different things. You know, how heavy is this Adam 80? How heavy is this yep. you know, HE 125? How about the Moster 185? You know, uh, do you need, do you want to use um, uh, wheels? You know, is this a foot launch yep. thing? There's so many different questions and instructor will definitely be so much better than asking. Uh, I mean, obviously we're going to say, yeah, of course, get the, you know, what Todd sells, but you know. Um, well, <laughs> it really, well, no, it, actually I have an honest answer to that. Um, yeah. and it, it, it falls in suit. It kind of, some people might take offense to it and I apologize, um, for, for the, for the, the snide comment, I guess. But the simple answer is, um, what kind of paramotor or what kind of motor should you start out with? Well, what kind of shoes should you buy? What kind of underwear do you buy? What kind of car do you want to drive? Because mm -hmm. yes, you may know how to drive a stick, but do you know how to drive a Bugatti at 220 mile an hour? Do you need to have a Bugatti that does 220 mile an hour or would you be happy with a truck? You know, 
the flying paramotor is the same thing. I, I'm the guy that wanted to start on a B wing because I didn't want to go fast through the A's and be bored with it and have to buy something else. So I figured I'll just be slightly above all my gear and then just fly it detuned, you know, fly it at a slower, lesser beginner type. That is part of what got me in trouble when I fell is I expected that beginner type glider response and I'd got an advanced gliders response. Um, so it, it's really, there's some people that could just strap a 185 on their back or a 303 and, and take off running and like God gave them wings to, to from the get go, just nail it. And there's other people that put an Adam 80 on their back and they stumble every step that they can and, and yeah. spend a lot of money investing in props. Um, exactly. Good training, good form, um, and having a good heart and ability, being true to yourself. That's how you fit yourself into your gear. Yeah, exactly. And, and the thing is, too, you know, uh, if you don't know what you don't know. You know exactly. before, before you get into the sport, you don't know the questions to ask. I mean, uh, number one, there's a, almost every single student that comes in, no matter what their size is, I put them, I put an Adam 80 on their back and let them rev it up. And that Adam 80 almost knocks them on their feet. I mean, they hold on to something <laughs> like, wow, there's so much through us. Yeah. I'm like, imagine 100. It's surprising. Imagine an HE 125. Imagine, you know, a, a, a most 185. You know, the Blackhawk yep. 220. I mean, there's so many different ones. And they go up a little bit more in weight as you get into uh, a bigger CC. Yep. So I let them put on these different motors to feel what, you know, a 125 feels like. A most 185, you know, uh, HE 125, an Adam 80, you know, and they're like wow there's so much difference i don't want this you know 185 that 125 is perfect and i have so many people that you know try to pre-buy their gear before they go to school because they got a deal you will never get a deal before you go to school well okay nine times out of ten you're not going to get a deal before you go to school and most of the time the stuff that you get is probably crap especially if you get off of ebay so be very careful right. ask your instructor and feel the different things, see what they have available, and try all of them. Put them on your back and see what it feels like. Um, anyway, let's see what else we got. Uh, Glenn, new and doing research. What is this pipe I need to avoid? When I say new, I mean <laughs> brand new. And haven't you talked, can't avoid it. <laughs> haven't taken lessons yet. Well, I think if you don't buy a motor that's more than two years old... <laughs> I think you might avoid that issue. I think that was back in the in 2019 models. Are, are they still in the 20s? 22s, no 21s. We, have, we still get... No, ki no kidding. So, okay. so I know of one Viterazzi pipe that has not cracked. And it's really? sitting on the wall in my trailer. <laughs> in, in, a there. <laughs> in a box in a box but I know I've got a backup or if someone needs one that I can sell on the spot you know uh, I, I have it there I know that I won't use it <laughs> um, but yeah. yes they have definitely gotten better uh, and, and I hope that that, that fail rate only, almost becomes nil well then I kind of don't because you know I like selling our pies <laughs> well if you got that new motor that you know, well, there's, a, there's a lot of a lot of new stuff coming out. The, yeah. the clutch kit, you know, the e start kit. Um, it just it's just nice. Absolutely. Uh, so, anyways, um, Glenn, when you go to training, you can ask your instructors about pipes. You know what has cracked, and there's a lot of other companies that has sell different motors. Uh, Todd is one of them that you can uh, talk to after you go to school. The good thing is you don't need to buy your equipment while you're in school. Use the school's equipment. Understand what they have. Feel the different equipment that they have, the different wings and stuff like that. After training or, you know, yeah, after training, now you understand the questions that you can ask. And you can go to people like Vortex Aero and talk with Scott. You can, you know, you can look around and talk with other paramotor pilots, you know, before Absolutely. you buy gear. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, before if you're if you're waiting around for instruction or whatever, go ahead and get hooked up with the local paramotor group. And yeah, that, you got that support even when you come back from training. You're not just like by yourself because it's a whole nother thing flying by yourself than it is with a group of guys, you know, or whatever. So uh, yeah, man, just uh, 
establish that support as soon as you can. One of the things you can do is sign up for ppgzone.com. It's free. It's like the Facebook for paramotor pilots, people that don't fly, people that do fly. And there's a map there that can show you the people that fly or have signed up that are around you. You can contact them through PPG Zone and you can say, hey, do you fly? Where do you fly from? Where's your LZ? Can I come out and see your motor? Can I watch you fly? Uh, there's many groups in your area, definitely, just like Will said and Todd said, look for groups in your area that fly and talk with them. I tell you, it's wonderful when you're flying around and you land and there's trucks and cars that come to you <laughs> and say, what is this thing that you are flying? And yes. there, we as paramotor pilots love to talk paramotor. As you can tell by the paramotor podcast here, we love to talk about <laughs> paramotors. And people, you know, love to talk to people. I mean, we are a really good carrying group. So talk to paramotor pilots, look at their gear, ask questions. Um, you can even, you should be able to go to any training facility and ask to sit in and watch and see what happens at their facility. I don't mind people coming in and no. looking and watching, you know, we'll, we'll tell them, you know, where to stand and stuff like that. If there's a paramotor pilot that's taken off, but if we're just having a class, please come in, watch, see what we're doing and uh, learn the knowledge because you can learn everything in a book. You can watch all the videos that you want to, but until you hold a wing in your hand that's connected to a harness and you pop that thing up and now you got a pendulum that you've never understood before. When you think about, all right, your DNA, your muscle memory, real quick, all right? If you have something over here off to your right and it's connected to a piece of string or a rope and you wanna take that and you wanna bring it over here, you're just gonna move it like this, right? If you got a wing above your head, you can't do the same thing. If you think that you're gonna pull this way and it's gonna come this way <laughs> and it's tilted, guess what? You're slamming it down that way by pulling away from it. So it's, you're relearning your muscle memory. So classes are relearning your muscle memory and understanding this big pendulum that you've never dealt with before, unless you skydived or something like that. Am I right? Yeah. Or am I right? Absolutely, absolutely. I think it's funny. Everybody seems to like, like to do the same thing when they first chitin. They pull that wing up and they try to pull that wing to them. And I always tell them, you will never pull that wing anywhere. <laughs> you run underneath it. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it, it's totally different. And I tell all my students that come in too, it's like, don't be discouraged. This is a learning curve. I know Tucker makes it look great. It makes it look easy. Oh, I'm just going to pull this up. Oh, let's go to McDonald's. Yum, yum, yum. No, it's, it's, <laughs> there's a lot of, a lot of, lots, lots of editing. And for people that learn how to fly, um, I, I put some videos out on my channel uh, of people learning how to fly or learning how to kite. And they think they're going to come in. It's like, hey, watch! I watched all this stuff on on the internet. I, I think I'm going to do this, and they pull it up and goes whoa, right back down. Like, wait a minute! I thought I was going to keep it up there and go fly this afternoon. Um, it, it's it's just a, it's just muscle memory. You you I've been alive for fifty some years, right? And muscle memory is oh, if I'm going to fall, oh, I'm going to catch myself, right? That's the same thing that you uh, feel like when you start to get lifted for that first time. You're like, oh, I'm going to sit. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to do this. It's a muscle memory thing, and it's not very intuitive when it comes to flying paramotors or kiting. So to answer the question, um, the, uh, does, um, does our frame accommodate a 140 prop? Uh, it, it would not safely. We'll put it that way. Yes, you can, um, but it would be a reverse launch type situation, and it's not advisable. Uh, it, it tucks a 130 nice and uh, and clean up underneath there. I don't oh, know many people that swing that, a 140 anymore. Was that from Was that from Walter? Okay, well Walter said. Yeah, that. yeah. Gotcha. So what? So uh, 130 on your frame would probably be yeah there. 130. Yeah, 140 is a little bit big. You need about a 155 uh, or 150 165 hoop for a 140 prop. About 15 centimeters. Um, uh, clearance is what it, it seems to be um, the norm. Gotcha. Looks like Glenn said, uh, no disrespect to any of you. I'm new here and recent subscriber. Well, thank you, Glenn. We appreciate you. Uh, do you have your own school? I want new equipment worth the money. Uh, I do run a school over at paramotorarkansas.com. Uh, you're more than welcome to check that out. It goes over to our Facebook page right now, uh, Paramotor Arkansas. Um, we've been doing this for about a year and a half. Uh, 
was when it comes to new, I'm thinking new wing for sure, 100%, a new wing. Yeah. Used wings, that's what's holding you up there. I mean, you know, a motor's pushing you. If you have a good deal on a out of box motor or a used motor that you know, uh, sometimes schools even have really good used motors. Yep. Um, that's the way to do it. We try to get our training and equipment at under ten thousand dollars. So full uh, brand new gear, um, wing training under ten thousand dollars for everything, um, and most of the schools can do that also i think i don't know you have to look around maybe not no probably well, they not. could whether could. they would right <laughs> what's, so not that's, a, what's not a good idea is to just find something on ebay that looks like an amazing right. deal no. buy it and then expect it to work out for you no there there's there's actually scams out there and we, we talked about this before as far as scams uh people will buy used equipment extremely cheap probably because they're broke they re-weld it they spray paint it you know to make it look new or newer and then they put it on uh, ebay with no repercussion from themselves or anything because they don't have to be inspected paramotors are not inspected uh, the faa yep. does not require inspection so you can pretty much put out anything you want to on eBay. And if you don't know what you don't know and don't know what to ask or look for, you're probably going to get someone's junk that they re welded and spray painted and is selling for cheap, but brand new. Another one is the word crispy for wings. I got a wing that, ha that has, <laughs> that has failed inspection. And, and I tell this to my students too, my, my first year, I got a brand new wing. I used it, went to three, two or three SIV courses, did a bunch of acro. The wing was crispy, beautiful, never went in water or anything. When you look at it, it looked brand new. That same year that I bought it, the same year that's, that's stamped in that thing, when I sent it out, it failed. The lines failed, the other things failed because I used it, but it was crispy. <laughs> you know, the only thing I want crispy is my cereal in the morning. I really don't care too much about a wing. A wing, you have to worry about the porosity. You got to worry about those lines stretching. You know, I mean, there's so many minute details when it comes to wings. You really got to be careful about that. So, yeah, and after all, if your motor fails or anything else fails, well, you're going to be held by your wing. <laughs> you exactly. know, glide down. Yep. Yeah. And wing fails. Yeah. That's You're in bad. Fun. So if you have so if a wing fails, you better have a good reserve. Don't skimp yeah, on so a reserve. A hundred dollars on eBay for fifty hundred dollar reserve. <laughs> Please don't do that either. You might as well just bring your lunchbox up there with you and say, "Oh, if the wing fails, I'll throw the lunchbox," because that's probably what you're going to get for a hundred dollar reserve. Yeah, but you got to make sure that reserve is on your unit. Other, if it's in <laughs> yeah. true, that's true. Your that Very that true. reserve in the trunk will not help you one bit. I agree. I agree. Um, so anyways, back to uh, that. As far as new gear, there shouldn't be any reason why you can't find a new wing that is either brand new or a demo out of box from a school or something that you can trust, which would probably be from your school, or a demoed or out of box motor that you can get from somebody reputable. I mean, when I say used wing or motor, they have to be reputable. You got to know their name and other people should know their name. These people on eBay, you'll never hear from them. You'll never see a video <laughs> on YouTube, nothing because they're selling junk. Another reason to get is to get established with a, a good group of guys. Yes, yep. exactly. Exactly. They, they will steer you in the right directions as far as where to go to get a good motor a good wing that's used or brand new too, because, you know, just like Todd said, you know, they're coming out with some really good stuff, brand new. And I don't think that you can find a brand new, you, can you find an out of box Vitara 195 for $2,100? Absolutely. <laughs> well, a brand new you one? could, but, yes. but you could, but why Absolutely. get a brand new, why get, what's that? Yes. Todd? Yes, what? Yes, you can find a Vitara for, for, for much less. A than brand new one? Let's just say the American market pays more than any other market on the planet. Okay, well, I'm about right here in this, I know, I know, I know, we're crazy over here, but still in the so States. much so that some some brands cannot advertise their product to America because it screws their market up. Well, you know, you got shipping and customs and taxes. Yeah, you know, import like fees that. and all that stuff. Import yeah. Fees, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, here in the states, you know, we're looking for really good 
equipment you know the best equipment that we can get the best uh, it's just like buying get. anything you don't want to go and settle for some half-assed junk and no. i mean if that's absolutely what you are just destined that that's just what you can afford and and you have this dream and, and you're going to go to canada or something on some broke ass you know this this <laughs> then then by all means um there's a market for you but if you want to have a little more peace of mind i guess um you can buy newer stuff or even brand new top of the line uh top of the line is kind of a hard one in our sport because everybody's frame and everybody's this is top of the line and the best right. um yeah. and that's how closely everybody's stuff is also made so don't you shouldn't feel that you buy one brand over another brand and oh i got taken uh if you look at that brand that item and you say it needs to do this i meet this these requirements and these are the requirements that it suits then you'll have a suitable uh flying machine it may not be your ideal choice but you know that twelve thousand dollar you know whatever versus that six thousand dollar whatever you know um sometimes you pay more for a name sometimes you pay more for quality and sometimes we just yeah. pay more <laughs> that's true and a lot of things too i mean if you're brand new and you haven't gone to training you have to remember too that the name of your flying machine motor is the frame whoever makes the frame calls it that no matter right. if you have a viterazi motor and he the vortex the frame will still be the name of that it can be any throttle it can be any harness and you're still calling it whatever the frame is yep. so i have an angel frame but i have a viterazi motor you know i got a That's frame you know a power to fly frame but a viterazi you know adam 80 you know i got this or this i got this i got the uh whatever with an he 125 and you can enter you can change out whatever you want to just like just like he said he's got a twenty one hundred dollar motor that i want to try i'll take off my viterazi motor and put that one on Absolutely. but guess what it's still going to be whatever that frame is it's still going to be an angel no matter what motor i put on it no matter what prop no matter what throttle no matter what harness it's still going to be that angel because the manufacturer said this is what the frame is so don't get duped into thinking i have to get a black hawk i have to get a this or power to fly or this because it's the best it's a frame and yeah when i picked when i when i picked my first choice uh, i actually had th there was a website that was up and it's no longer functioning uh, but it had a list of like 50 different paramotors like bailey's b5s b3s they had wow. you know boxer motors so, i mean some of the stuff now that i've been in in the industry more i've seen more of it but there's still stuff that i've never even heard of that was on that yeah. list and when you see the numbers that they talk in for for you know power and horsepower you know i i was like really flabbergasted and and so then you finally you talk to some people online you know shoot out shoot a message to tucker you know he'll never answer me well i lucked out he answered me you know <laughs> you shoot shoot little messages to these people that that you think might have an idea and say hey you know what do you fly why do you fly it you know uh well what do you think of this motor and get get some opinions but know that an opinion is just that you know and and then i finally had like three brands that i was looking at that all had the same motor the viterazi that that seemed to be what it was going to be my choice um and um of those three brands i chose none of them <laughs> <laughs> I wound up talking with a dealer, uh, like I said, talk to Kyle and Kyle said, well, have you thought about this? And, and the, the, actually the brand I was looking at, the Propulse Titan was very similar to, a, to one of the, the, the his, his, their brands, the, the, um, power fly brands. So the, the free I think it was the freestyle or something like that. Um, and so, uh, he wound up and said, well, take a look at this. So took a look at the specs. I compared the specs and they all read the same pretty much and so i said well hell uh he he gave me a lot of information actually my choice was a renegade i don't know if you're familiar with the brand it was a plastic paramotor um mm -hmm. uh, so yeah uh the guy out of arizona i think it was or colorado made him it was completely plastic 
Um, you can stand on it. He did all that fun stuff of jumping on your paramotor, you know, because that's what we do. Um, but uh, he went out of business, so he didn't go out of business. He basically shut down shop and went back into the water sport industry and dirt biking industry. Um, so uh, the day, like the day after I would have bought the stuff, I would have had no support, nothing, parts, nothing. Yeah. And uh, I was lucky that Kyle had actually known the guy and, and knew that he was going out of the industry. And so he said, not that it's a bad system. It's 101 pounds. Um, <laughs> dry. Wow. Dry. Yes. Plastic? Tw- plastic? Dry. 100 yes. pounds? Yes. Heavy. Wow. Yeah. So well, at least it um, doesn't break. No. <laughs> well, so that's how I wound up with my first RS, you know, and um, it, 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 it lasted quite a few um, learning errors, mm-hmm. shall we say. Uh, it held up good. Um, I like our frame now, uh, unless you want to go with a huge, big prop. Um, th- th- a lot of them, I like the shininess of them. So the titanium is really nice. Uh, I actually fly the stainless steel ones and, and um, just because they're so durable and it's only a couple of pounds difference, you know, but I'm a guy that flies with a full tank of fuel too. So, you know. I fly with a full tank of gas also, just because yeah. I want to do the Icarus race. So I wanted to feel, you know, heavy yeah. all the time when I took exactly. it off. I know in the future, that's what I want to do. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And plus, I don't want to land. I mean, if I got to land for fuel, that's just going to piss me off. You know, yeah. I, <laughs> you know, okay. So I put one gallon in there. Okay. I fly and fill up four times in the day. No, I fill that whole baby up and, and fly. All I mean, yeah. You're only carrying it for that. What? 20, 30 yards that you got to run with that's it or it. wheel with it. Mm-hmm. And once that wing's overhead, it's all light from there. Absolutely. I want to I tell you guys the story real quick, too. Um, one of the things that people are always talking about, and you, saw, you see the, the Tucker guy, it's like, oh, I bought a $2,500 paramotor, doesn't work. And that was a very <laughs> interesting one. And so I found a deal where I could get a wing and a paramotor for $3,000. Wow. So I said, okay. Um, talked on the phone and uh, looked at the pictures, everything. I'm like, okay, the look's almost brand new. Everything looked good. And the wing was crispy. So um, <laughs> I drove all the way down to uh, where they where they were. And um, it started up, you know, the motor started up. I kited it. It looked good and the lines looked good. So I'm like, okay, this will be a very interesting video that I'll do, right? So I got it home and I'm like, okay, the first thing I want to do is just do a, you know, a, a hundred dollar maintenance because I don't know anything about it. They don't make the motor no more. There are no parts for it, no nothing. I'm like, okay, so what am I going to do with this? I guess run it until it dies, right? So I started up and flew it for a little bit, and now it's making some weird kinky noises. And I'm like, okay, that's probably it for that motor. So I got a great motor, a great paramotor. I was able to fly, and it scared the crap out of me. It's the the scariest thing you've ever – it shook and everything. It was just (laughs) awful. The wing I I flew, I I flew it too, and it was the scariest thing. Obviously, the lines are out of uh, balance or something. I mean, must – something's weird with it. I don't know what's wrong with it. Scared the crap out of me. So if that was my first time to get in a paramotor with a wing and go fly, I would never fly again. That's crap. And it was only as a 2018. The wing was a 2018, but I don't know, the placard was gone. And when I did some research, it kind of looked like it was a 2015. But still, a 2015 wing, you think, okay, it's not too not, not too bad. And a 2018 paramotor, not too bad. And, yet, and I got it for 3000 Sweet. Mm-mm, I'm taking the motor off, and I'm using it as a kiting harness for the students. <laughs> And the wing, I'm, I'm letting uh, my students use it when they, you know, live three hours away and they only can come over on the weekend, letting you use, use that. So really, $3,000 gone. Now, what could I have done with that $3,000? Not bought the wing. Not bought that. Not <laughs> bought that. Absolutely not. So yeah. what I'm trying to say, guys, is that you could get a really good deal that uh, it's a 2018 it's not too many years ago it looks good it starts up it runs the wing is crispy and you'll probably never fly more than one or two flights and scare the crap out of you and i i don't want this one more so talk with your instructor if you need to get up with someone and and just if you don't know anybody or you don't know anybody around you get up with me my number is 501-747-3558 i'm available from sun up to sundown seven days a week for my students and for anybody that wants to talk paramotor don't call me up and ask me about things that are not paramotor because i don't want to talk about that hey i get calls like that (laughs) in the morning from poland or russia or spain (laughs) yeah it's fun 
Yep. So anyways, if you need someone to call, please give me a call. Um, feel free to call anytime. Text me. Let me know who you are and what you need. Um, also, Todd Scott, uh, Vortex Arrow, he has a lot of awesome things over there, Vortex Arrow. Definitely make sure you go to vortexarrow.com. I dropped that link in the Super Chat, and also it will be in the description down below. Uh, you have a YouTube awesome. channel, too? I, I do. Um, I, I shared. I think I've shared it in the bio. I saw um, your it was a QR code, and I couldn't yeah, get it off my phone. Because it's really kind of screwy, and <laughs> it's it's kind of hard to find me. Um, it's fly high is, is who, what I, what it comes from. Um, but there's a, a post or a, a exclamation point in it. So like, I, I always have to find it funky ways, but since they came out with that QR code, um, that made it really easy cause it goes straight to the page. So I, I'll put up, I'll put the QR code up on the screen. I'll, I'll check it with my phone and I'll put it in the description down below, probably, uh, either tonight or tomorrow. So I appreciate it. Yeah. So I'm kind of dumb to it all. We'll though. we'll be able to find you guys. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, you'll see my video where I, I, I there might be the unedited version. Actually, I'm sorry of my crash. Um, I know that the crash video is on there, and, and probably 300 others of my progression through the sport. Um, I, I haven't posted anything lately because the store kind of takes a lot of my time away. And uh, as much as fun as it is to talk paramotor and eat and drink and sleep paramotor uh yeah it's every now and then i have to not <laughs> do it hey, Todd, but then all i want to do is do it so um fly, it's an addiction uh, fly sky high can you yeah spell yeah so that, yeah i mean spell spell it for the youtube F it's it's like f l y um h i p or h i g h p p g i think uh, f l y s k what, what is no, it? No, fly high. Fly high. Okay. Are you talking about fly sky high? Not fly sky high. Fly high. That's what I'm talking about. H I G H P P G. And that's what? Your username? On... That's, that should be my YouTube. Oh, okay. H I G H. Is it coming up? P P G. I'm going to open up your, your QR code. Or, real quick. or T Scott at Gmail. Did a lot of talking in here, it looks like. Okay, so there that is. Let me get my phone out and see if I can maximize that QR code. Open up my camera. Man, I tell you what, it makes it so easy when you can QR codes. Ah, there it is, YouTube. There we go. Found it. Oh, I'm already subscribed. Ha ha, how about that? Awesome, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so I'm one of your three subscribers. That's great, that's cool, <laughs> I love it. So, yeah, I believe I'm subscribed to you also. Um, let me, <laughs> let me see if I can. Anybody that, that, that follows me or whatever, I try to follow back, you know. Let me see if I can. No, okay. It's not spectacular, but it's there. No, you got uh, 213 subscribers and almost 300 oh. videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share this with our messenger, our chat, our, what is it, our guest chat messenger real quick. So let me put it in there, paste, and there it is. So it's T-N-T-R-A-C-I-N-G-T-O-D-D. -T -T. That's your username. Uh, TNT Racing Todd, okay. So it's the other one. Yeah, see, I get all mixed up. So we got that. I got your, I got it now, and I will put it right now in the description down below. Awesome. See, I can do that while we're doing this. This is great. I love this thing. <laughs> so many cool things I can okay, do. Okay, doggies, that. leave me alone. Doggies, come on. Come on, come on, come on. You got happy Ooh. there? No, these are the big doggies. Oh. Lily. Lily and, and uh, Sprinkles. Todd and I, but Todd and I both had dogs named Happy. Uh, yeah, you know, she's you know black. That, she's she's black, so you can't see her on the screen. How <laughs> funny! I've you, got you the know. invincible black screen, I guess. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So I'm also putting it. It's in the description. And I just put it in the super chat. So there you go, guys. You can check out his actual YouTube channel. Hey, you know that we share the same birthday. Really? You're just, you're just younger than I am. So Gemini's Gemini. Gemini. Yeah, June tenth too. June tenth, man. And and my dad is June tenth. So June tenth, June tenth, June tenth. Anybody else June tenth? Is anybody else in the June tenth uh, club? 
<laughs> Glenn says, what kind of dog? Uh, well, so Happy is a miniature wiener dog, uh, oh. Dachshund. Um, that's damn out, lived his life like twice now. He's like 16 or something. We just adopted a 14 year old three legged Chihuahua. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. <laughs> That's he's adorable. That's wow, fourteen. Whew. Yeah, I call I call him old man. <laughs> he has like no teeth, and he's like yeah, old and but he's adorable. Yeah, then I have a black plot. Um, what are they called? He's black plot. Um, black plot. Black hound. plot. Red tick hound, something like that. Yeah. Black plot red tick hound, something. And there. Yeah. There. It's the mother of the other one. And the mama is, is and the, the other one. We have, um, the father was a lab. So Lily looks a, like a black lab, kind of. And then Ringo looks like a bird dog. He's white and he's got this perfect ring on his butt. Let me see if I can show him. He's white, so he might be able to You're see You're going to show us his butt? That's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he yeah, put his butt right over there. Almost. His name's uh, Ringo Starr. Oh, Ringo Star. It's kind of hard to see him. Stick your head in the camera there, Rebecca. Say hello. Hey. That's not the same as sticking your head in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I can. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> that's, that's Todd's better half. That's my handler. Yeah. <laughs> She's, She's the boss. She's the boss. <laughs> Lily, you can't be on the film. <laughs> I cannot believe that it's nine o'clock already. We've been yapping for two hours. It's ten o'clock. That's crazy. Over here it's nine. So, oh. and in Walter in Australia, it's tomorrow. Walter, what time is it over there in Australia tomorrow? So, so we know that we'll be alive tomorrow because he is. <laughs> What's the weather like tomorrow? I... <laughs> What's going on in the world tomorrow? I don't know yet, so ask Walter. Um, anyway, any other questions in the super chat? Any other questions on the panel? I had a really fun night. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, I was worried. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. Thank you for your service. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Yeah, you're army. I'm marine. So we're we're close. We're we're in the military. We high five yeah. each other in the military. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah! I'm able to be retired. You know, not dead yet. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> weather sucks lately. Keep these hurricanes away. Yeah. Yeah. Don't any of that. Fun. So no, so no, no other questions in super chat. No other questions in the on the panel. Yeah. All right. Correct. Nope. Well, All right. Well, well thank you so much for joining us. And what's that, Jim? I said I'm gonna have to watch this show again. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is there a link that I can share? Why is that? To, um... Is it so awesome? Yeah, it's been so informative. Lots of good information. And Todd, we will get you a link. Awesome. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, because I'm sure David would want to see it since I um, was uh, heavily Vortex Arrow themed. So, <laughs> so, so he'll be all like, no, why did you say that? <laughs> no, he's, he's, well, he's usually pretty good at it. Well, usually, well, well, I mean, we have the live show here, but then we also put the audio version out. And the audio version is downloaded at least 5,000 times a month. Wow. So we get lots of, we get more hits off the audio. Then really? we do off of this video. So wow. so you can find us at uh, paratalk.org. That's our audio. Or just search for PPG Grandpa's Permutter Podcast. We are everywhere on Amazon. You can look on Amazon, on Audible, uh, Spotify, any podcasting app. Search for PPG Grandpa's Paramotor Podcast. We're, we're rolling up on the end of season three. We're going to be on season four here. Wow. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be incredible. Uh Linda yeah. is, is our is our PR girl. She's one that finds everybody that wants to be on her show or begs yeah. and pleads with them until they say, All right, I'll be on the time show. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Bye, Roll. 
So we definitely appreciate Linda. We appreciate Will Fly. He definitely takes care of um, a lot of things in the background. He looks for uh, all the people and put them in the spinning wheel of winning things. He searches for um, questions and posts them on here so we can see. So we definitely appreciate you, Mr. Will Fly. Yeah, Jim Sennard in, from Canada. He's awesome too. He's our official yeah. sponsor and, take, and made it to the paramotor calendars. He gets us stickers and decals. Hey, I see your 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 hey, wiener. Baby. I see your wiener, Todd. You see my wiener? I see your wiener. Dog. <laughs> so cute. Horrible. It's the most oh, okay, just the head. Oh wait. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I'm sorry. Like he has a little, little math. <laughs> Y'all got dirty brains. <laughs> that, that was totally late at dirty. night. <laughs> Only when it gets late at night. Or something. <laughs> I get up a brain I'm ready to go to bed. But uh, anyways, real quick, Thomas, again, uh, how do we get up with you, uh, Vortex Arrow? What's the cool stuff to look at on the website, and what's the cool stuff going out? E-prop prices, um, our 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 uh, electric start conversion. I don't know if he's got the clutch conversion up yet, but that will be coming up soon. Uh, our frames, they they're always hot. Can't keep them in stock. They we, we make twenty thirty of them. They get sold. I, it's it's just there's a whole lot of stuff to look at on there vortecarrow.com um 910 no. yeah well <laughs> no we already sold out of all those again yeah it's, it, it, <laughs> um spell yeah. spell spell, spell vortex arrow because it's not like the green arrow yes um it's v o r t e x a e r o like aeronautics very good dot com dot com dot com awesome and it's actually the real name is vortex arrow i can't show it to you because i'm in the way there we go vortex arrow propulsion systems which um uh, david wanted the original logo just to be like a nike swish and just have the a but we found that most people did not know what that was um although cool um so i've slowly been adding to it <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i kind of like the way, way the, the logo that we got right there now um I, I don't know i think it says oh. good about the business and and his store and represents well i guess i should have told you to flip it brown because it's mirror we can't see it it's oh, mirror really? yeah what oh when i'm oh it's just so that i only see my background no we can see your background but it's mirrored i have to see it Oh, I'll have, to look, at, I'll have yeah. to look in the mirror to see what it looks like. Oh, see, so I switched my background before because... That's which is what's behind you, too. The time. Yeah, the whole time I've had it backwards because when I first was looking at it, it looked... It was the wrong way. That's there you one. go. There we there go. Now we can see it. Good. Just in time to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you all for having me. I'll see uh, you all later. Thank you very much. Have a good one, Todd. Thank you yeah. again. Bye. Thank Bye, you. Uh, that was a really fun podcast. I really like that. And you guys That's helped great. out so well. We appreciate you. So, Will Fly, I guess, uh, tell us a little bit about your uh, your Will Fly PPG YouTube. What's been going on with that, bud? Uh, yeah, I just recently put out uh, just the tip 5.0, just the tip 6.0 is in the works right now. And, uh, yeah, uh, go to willflyppg.com and that'll take you to my YouTube page. Please subscribe if you like some corny humor and some tips for paramotoring also. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You, you do really good. I mean, I, I, I might have to... I have to hire you to make videos for me because man i have just don't have the time to make videos i don't even put music on my videos i just you know put up almost, almost raw stuff and it's like uh, it's not fun and exciting it's uh, i need more time to be able to do something like that but you put out really good stuff you do well, really good you. you do really good i mean all of your videos have thousands and thousands of views so you're right up there with tucker oh no <laughs> nowhere near tucker <laughs> nowhere near tucker you're the you are a local Tucker. <laughs> you're the one. You're the one that we can actually talk with. Yeah, of course. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we definitely appreciate everything that you put up on on YouTube and all the things you do for you know us and the paramotor uh, community. You do a lot, and we appreciate you, bud. Right on, man. Thank you.
Absolutely. Yeah. Linda, I mean, you help out too, not only us, but you help out a lot of shows. You help out your son over on Thursday nights. And uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your son and Thursday night. Oh, me. Oh, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're, yeah, you're Linda. Okay. okay. Um, you caught me off guard. Gosh. Oh, sorry. Usually I, I can't stop talking for 10 minutes, you know, so I'm getting started. Now I have to say, though, thank you so much, chatters and my listeners for joining us tonight and every Monday night. Absolutely appreciate all of you. Um, yeah, you can, uh, if you want to be on the show, just uh, you can private message me. That's how I usually find people. And uh, just say, hey, I want to be on your show. Or you can go to my link, paramomusa.com, and just say, I want to be on your show. Did I say it right, PPG? <laughs> That's it. And uh, otherwise, if you want to find me on Thursdays, I'm uh, usually hanging out on my son's show, Robert Michaels, who does paragliding talk. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. <laughs> yes. yeah. So um, you don't miss out on that because I have to say he always has awesome guests on his show. Yeah, I think he learned that from me. You know, that's why they call me Paramom. But um, yeah, that's it. I I love my Mondays. I love my Thursdays. I love hanging out with everybody during the week on their shows. And um, I support y'all. You know, everybody's doing a great job. And we got to keep it going. Absolutely. And uh, I'm working on November to get my November guest. So my we listeners out week. there, y'all want to be on the show? What? Next week. Who do we have next week? Yeah. What's what's our lineup for the next uh, X amount of weeks? I love yeah, the Pat, paper calendar. We have Mr. The One and Only Kyle Mooney is going to be in the house. Woot woot. If I'm yelling, it's because I'm excited. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because I, I, it's funny. I reached out to him a couple months ago. And then, of course, everybody, you know, and fly doing their you know the flying and they're really super busy and right. then it dawned on me i was like going through my list i'm like oh i gotta get back with this dude so that's what i did and then we have the 17th we have avery avery, avery good Palmer. yep That'll be and good. then on the 24th we have john allen martin he's gonna be with us so he's super excited about that awesome. and then halloween show so we're all gonna dress up and uh, I'm reaching out to uh, to Danny. He was in our chat tonight, to Danny, Danny Williamson. Okay. And uh, so he seemed pretty psyched about being the guest on Halloween. So and gonna we're gonna have to we're gonna have to dress up for Halloween. I, I'm gonna go as a grandpa with a beard that flies to paramotors. Hey, I'm dressed up right now. No. <sighs> <laughs> it's okay. You can I'm, I'm gonna, do whatever. I'm gonna dress, you want. I'm gonna dress up. With a, a Paralife shirt, Paralife, there you go, from Paralife PPG. Uh, shout out to Mark McElroy that makes these shirts. They're amazing. So thank you very much, Mr. Mark McElroy at Paralife. And I've got, and um, November 7th, I booked um, Michael D'Antonio. I think that's Mass Loper, right? Is it? Oh, is it? With electrical paramotor. All right, this is going to be good. This is gonna be good. We have some really good shows coming up. That's really awesome. I know. I'm excited. I'm excited. I love it. I love it. Everybody that everybody's been just so, you know, so nice and just excited to be on the show and everything. And so yeah. there you go. So that's the lineup for right now. I was like on my messaging all day today, just you know. Who's out there and I think everybody knows Linda that's in the paramotor community. Everybody knows you. Yeah. yeah. There you go. That's it. Yeah. Well, thank, you thank you. So thank you so much for what you do for us and everybody else in the community. But I love it. I love it. You're, you're it's awesome. Fun. Not even a job, you know. It's just fun to do. I can't pay it, but in stickers, so I'm sorry, you know. Uh <laughs> Wait a minute, Jim can make checks, he says, so I can we can get Jim to send you a check. <laughs> yeah, to send me a check, like you know, check mark. Like check. Go. He can send me check mix. <laughs> a trail mix, check mix, I love it. Yeah. Hey Will Will Flyer, are we having a show tomorrow with uh, Shane? 
Yes, we are. Tomorrow, uh, you can go to ppgshane.com, and at 8 p.m. Eastern time, it's going to be uh, Shane, Mark McElroy, and myself talking paramotors and other stuff. It's kind of an open forum kind of thing. Yeah. I might be able to... I might be able to hang out with you. Um, I'll be probably driving back because I'm picking up a paramotor for one of my students in Texas. Well, come on over. So I'll be. Uh, <laughs> That'd be cool. I'll, I'll, I, if the if the internet's good, I'll have my phone on you. Know, I'll be able to listen to you, so that'll work out good. Right on. All right, and we also have uh, another uh, paramotor show on Wednesdays from paramotorgirl.com. Uh, Jay does an all girl, but it's not all girl anymore. So I probably should stop saying that, but. Uh, she started off with an all girl all girl paramotor podcast and uh go to paramotorgirl.com check her out it goes to her youtube page make sure you hit that subscribe and that bell notification and jim you hook us up a lot too with the decals which are decals which i didn't know thank you for letting us know the canadian decal thing yep. and uh, stickers and calendars and all the cool printing stuff that you do up in canada a eh, with your maple syrup spell and money so how do we get up with you bud you can connect with me through carepp.com. You email me, phone, 306-946-4027 uh, from extension 2, and it'll come directly to me. Awesome. So I'm the only one that actually has your direct line. Uh, everyone else has to press 2. <laughs> you betcha. I, Don't I give that number I up. feel special. <laughs> <laughs> Business number doesn't ring 24 <laughs> <laughs> But we definitely appreciate you, Jim, for everything that you do for the show. And everybody that has helped on the panel, uh, Sean, uh, Joshua, um, who, was this, who else was on there uh, today? Who else was on our panel that popped Don? on for a little bit? Uh, Don? No, yeah. Uh, Sean. Exactly. Yeah, Sean Lee. Yeah, Sean and John. They all rhyme. Yeah. Everybody that jumped on, thank you. And Josh, we appreciate you. And we hope that your eye gets better, yeah. Josh, so you can see us next time. All right. Uh, if there's anything else, any words of wisdom, um, any takeaways before we say goodbye for tonight? Fly safe, stay humble, and have fun. Absolutely. Fly safe. Stay safe. Fun. If you need to get up with me for any reason, paramotor related, just give me a call or text me at 501-747-3558. All right, guys. It's been a pleasure as always. A lot of I fun. can't wait to see you again uh, next Monday. And uh, we'll yeah. listen to you and chat with you on ppgshane.com tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. That's it. And yep. get up with Jim at carepp.com to get your decals. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> All right. Night, y'all. Right. Have a good one. Peace Thank out. Thank you, chatters. Bye-bye. Night. Thank you for listening to the end. If you enjoyed the show, please hit the thumbs up. And if you'd like to hear more, then click the subscribe button, and you'll be notified when new ones come available.